Welcome to the Abundant Accountant Podcast, where all accountants come to learn all the ways to grow your firm. And when you're in doubt, I am here to help you out. So if you're ready to learn and ready to grow your firm, then you're in the right place to sharpen your skills and increase your revenue. Do you want to attract more of your ideal clients? maybe make a little bit more money and work less less hours? Well, you can join me to unlock the secrets to growing a profitable accounting firm with less stress by joining our upcoming masterclass. You'll learn very simple, easy ways to sift through clients so you can get to the right ones, proven tactics to actually get you paid instead of giving away free advice. And honestly, how to stop competing over price forever. So if you would like to join me at our upcoming Abundant Accountants Masterclass, just head on over to theabundantaccountant.com. And before we dive into today's show about the top 10 qualities so you can attract your ideal clients, I would like to give a shout out to our reviewer of the week. And our reviewer of the week goes to Adam, and he says, Michelle creates such amazing content and really boils things down to her essence, to their essence. Her experience and contacts throughout the professional world are second to none. This is a podcast that not only should every accountant be listening to, but anyone in a professional service industry. The information that she passes along is invaluable. I'm looking forward to listening to her future episodes. All hail the pitch queen. Well, thank you so much, Adam. And yes, I mean, what I'm sharing with you is for, you know, an entrepreneur in a service-based industry, but I've personally had the privilege of working with so many accountants just like you. So I know exactly what some of the challenges are. And a lot of times you just were not trained in these areas. And I'm here to support you in that so you can grow the firm of abundance. And with that said, I do want to hear from more of you. I want to get to know more of you who listen in each and every single week. So I would like to just take a moment to extend an invitation for you to subscribe and leave a written review for the show so I can keep on delivering the content that you want and love. And I will take that review and share it on a future episode right here on the Abundant Accountant Podcast. Today on the Abundant Accountant Podcast right here, I am talking about the 10 qualities that you must have as an accountant or CPA to attract your ideal clients because it's super uber duper uber important to have these qualities as it attracts the clients that you like, that you love, that you want to hear from, that you want to help and serve. So that is what we are talking about today. So I'm very excited to be here and be able to share this with you because have you ever wished that you could sell yourself and your services sincerely when you're talking to potential clients without sounding sleazy, without sounding salesy and all that other stuff? And, you know, a lot of the accountants I've worked with have come and asked me this exact same thing, like, Michelle, how do I do that? And it's really about communicating what you do with confidence. And the more confident you are with your clients, the better. It's really important. And I guess that's why I'm called the pitch queen, right, after all. So a lot of accountants and CPAs that I work with in the past and people I talk to, they don't really realize that a lot of times your job entails sales conversations, right? When you're talking to a client, when you're answering your phone, if someone leaves you a Yelp review, those are all different forms of sales conversations. And I understand that sales isn't really something that comes naturally to a lot of people, but it is something that can be learned, and that I do know. So if you are someone who is trying to sell yourself for you know, a little bit better value to your clients so your time is more valuable with being your authentic self and not someone who you're not, then this is the perfect episode for you. And some of these 10 qualities you might have, but we might just need to wake them up a little bit. 
So I will be sharing the 10 qualities that accountants should embrace and how you can showcase them to really be able to attract the people that you want to work with in the same way on how I keep attracting accountants that I love to work with. So let's dive into the first quality. I would definitely say that the first quality for someone in your profession because of your professional services industry that you're in is excellent organizational skills. And this might seem really simple. I think a lot of accountants are organized, but when it comes to your organizational skills as it relates to dealing with the client, this is your emails, your calendars, your text message campaigns, if you have any of those going, it is a quality that will have you stand out from every other accountant. Because I think when you're doing the compliance work or any of that like detailed work, you're really organized. But what about on the client facing side? Not to mention, let's talk about like real habits, right? Having the systems for follow up, having the systems for if you're going to send out birthday cards, What is the system that you have for the organizational skills part of what the client experiences? Do they experience you in chaos? Do they experience you running late? Do they experience you not going and honoring their time when you're having a client meeting and you go in overtime all the time? How organized are you? That's going to be quality numero uno. I am learning Spanish, so we can do all the numbers in Spanish today. So the second one is time management skills. So if you're organized or if you need to be a little bit more organized, having the organized quality will also make your life more efficient, but it will bring you more clients. I have recently have a class going on right now, and two of the CPAs in there do a lot of time blocking. I highly recommend that. I do the same. I'll set out 30 minutes on a Friday for follow-up or I'll set out one hour on a Wednesday for follow-up. So time blocking is a great way to stay organized, which will then set you up for success when you're talking to your clients because then you can focus on setting appointment reminders and managing your time in order to show them that you are really organized. All right, so time management number two, right? CPAs, You and accountants have an important role as it relates to decision-making processes of your client. But if you're late to meetings, or if you say this, and this is a big one, this I see way too often. So if you can just stop doing this, you'll be good to go. If you say, hey, I'm going to get you documents to review by Friday this week, and you end up sending them Monday next week. Do you think that shows good time management skills? You never want to over-promise and then under-deliver. We always want to under-promise and over-deliver. It's one of the biggest things on having really good management skills, especially for time, because if you keep estimating your time wrong, what are clients going to think of you? Are you going to attract the right clients that you truly want? So be really, really clear and upfront when you're working with a new client. What can they expect? When will you be working on things? Stick to it and always deliver when you say. Goes back to quality number one, being organized, showing up on time to meetings. On time really means about 15 minutes early. And also hire some help if you need it because quality number one and two will get you either number one, higher quality clients or number two, lower value clients. So which do you prefer, right? Delegate tasks to maybe an assistant or another team member so you can focus on delivering the best service to your clients and also following the time management rules that you put in place for yourself. And remember, I think the biggest one on this is just really under-promising and over-delivering because then you're not really putting too much pressure on yourself. You're giving yourself an extra buffer. I would say from all the accountants I've worked with, if you're estimating something will get, you know, take three days, maybe deliver it and tell the client six days. If you get it done early, great. Okay. So quality number three, attention to detail. How many of you 
pay attention to the nitty gritty details when it comes to doing the technical work, right? The fun stuff. But when we're talking about the sales side and the client interaction side, this is a really important area to pay attention to detail. Because if you don't, eh, the client experience is going to suffer and then you won't be attracting the exact types of clients that you're really looking for. So don't miss the details. Pay close attention to everything. Dot your I's, cross your T's, and it will really help you stay on top of things. And I mean paying attention to detail to like quality one and two, right? Number one, excellent organization. And number two, excellent time management. So if you're paying attention to those details, then you'll be on top of things and no one will say a word to you. And the clients from the sales point of view will be like, wow, they're really on top of things. Not only when it comes to the technical work, you can actually take this a step further, paying attention to details, the quality that you can hire for. There's a lot of people that are like big picture thinkers. If you're that big picture thinker and you don't really have good attention to detail, it might be worth the investment to bring someone on who is like OCD in detail like me. (laughs) I'm like super OCD when it comes to detail. I understand not everyone is like that, but it is a great, great quality and trait to bring on your team because people that pay attention to detail are going to be high earner businesses, high net worth individuals, clients that might fit that ideal client profile that you're looking to attract. So again, we're talking about attracting your ideal clients and qualities that those types of clients are looking for. So they are looking for attention to detail. I promise you that. Okay, let's talk about quality number four. Quality number four is your attention must stay on the client. This is really, really important And I see this a lot of times like in client relationship type businesses, which is what you're in. When we pay attention to the client and we're really with the client, that's where you're going to be able to build trust. That's where clients are going to feel heard. That's where clients will feel appreciated. I would say on your ideal client side, like me or someone else who would pay for your services, One of the number one things that we realize is that we don't get paid attention to very much. So if you want a high high net worth business owner or high net worth individual or a business owner with multiple locations, make sure your attention stays on them all the time. Number one, you're going to get more referrals this way. Number two, you're going to get more reviews. So if you have your cell phone out, let's say in a client meeting, maybe it's a good idea to put that away. Another good thing to do when you're paying attention to clients is I like to just ask questions in order to show them that, A, I'm listening because I'll repeat back to them what they said. So I have a ton of great tips on building relationships, building rapport. We've done them on previous episodes here on the Abundant Accountant Podcast. So you can just search probably building relationships or building rapport. But make sure your attention stays on the client in front of you. And I like to explain it like this. Let's say you're at a picnic table, right? And you've got, you're sitting on one side and then the other person sitting across from you, which might be happening in your client meetings or on video if you're running your business more remote. One of the things you want to do is pretend you're sitting on the same side of the table. You have to visualize it in your mind. So really put your mind right next to your client. From their point of view, they're going to feel that you're really paying attention to them. So I call this sitting on their side of the table. Even if you're sitting across from them or even if you're on video with them, Imagine in your head, you sitting right next to them and watch what happens. All right, another quality that will have you attracting your ideal clients. This is a good one. It's being creative. And creativity is often over-underlooked, I should say, in this field, but it's actually really important in this profession. 
thinking outside the box for solutions to your clients, right? We are all, or not we, because I'm not an accountant, but I work with so many, so I put myself in your category. We as accountants are like, you know, you're so busy. It's like doctor's offices. It's like one thing after the next, after the next. And sometimes we don't have space to be creative. So when maybe during the week, each week, you can spend 30 minutes on thinking of some creative outside of the box things that you can do for your clients. Maybe it's on the customer service side, client service. Maybe it's in your follow-up. Maybe it's a marketing thing. Maybe it's you're going to go spend 30 minutes every Friday, post on LinkedIn, something creative about you, about your firm, or about how you can help restaurant business owners reduce their uh, expenses or reduce their cost of goods. Something just unique and different. It's being creative. But what I found is that in order to be creative, you have to create the time. And if you don't have the time, then we're back to square run, right? Keep better organization, better time management. So these are all really, really important. So I would say set aside 30 minutes to get creative and really think about what can you do different with your client follow-up? What could you do different with your client service? Maybe what can you do different with your team in your office? So I was recently in Chicago with a bunch of CPAs and one of them, her name is Diane. She was sharing with me how she really wanted to have the office dress a little differently. And, you know, she had some sort of a dress code policy for the firm. And we got creative. And I said, you know what, Diane, instead of like giving them a book and telling them this is how you have to look and how you have to dress, what if you all just went shopping for the day? And while you're shopping, you can share what culture you're trying to create within your firm. So it was a really creative, fun, team building thing that she was able to do and implement Uh, Granted, that took her probably a half a day to take the office out shopping, but this is just a unique and creative thing. So what can you do creative in your firm? What can you do creative for your staff? Maybe it's a fun, you know, birthday party with the CPA that I work with a lot who's been on this show. She's creative and brings in a masseuse once a week. So there always are things that you can be doing. All right, let's go to the next quality. Again, this is to attract your ideal clients. So in my example with Diane, if her staff elevates their presentation, that's changing who they're attracting as clients. It's creating a first impression when people show up to her office. All right, I, you guys have heard me talk about this one before. Quality number six, have a commitment to your sector, a.k.a have a commitment to a specific niche. Yes, this is a quality that will serve you. This is a quality that will help you. Inside and out, every single time, I promise you, if you know exactly who you help and serve, that will increase your value and your income potential, and it will track your ideal clients. So as an example, It's one of my students. I'm not going to say any names, so we're going to call her Susie. But, you know, Susie and I, we met um, on the phone a couple years ago. We met in person about a month ago. And then we started working together. She's actually in my eight-week sales mastery training. And Susie was frustrated. Like, I mean, real frustrated. Taking on all clients, discounting services. I'm just like, you know, really just not having a commitment to a specific niche or sector, whichever word sounds best for you, and was just frustrated, like wants to fire half the clients. And, you know, I said, hey, are you committed to really making this shift and getting really specific? And she said, yes. And here's what she picked. And things have already started to shift. Just yesterday, she would have done something for free for a client, or she said maybe between $500 and $1,000 for the engagement, and she charged $29.50. She got paid up front. That's also part of what she's working on. So Susie works with small business owners. They must engage in two services, and uh, the total services 
value to her and her firm minimum is $10,000 per client over a 12 month period. So, you know, if it's monthly services that you offer, if it's tax planning, if it's tax resolution, whatever it may be, who are you going to work with? She only works with service-based businesses, no contract manufacturing, no restaurants, no construction. Got real specific and her life is starting to shift. And you can feel it too. I mean, her energy is shifting completely. And I know it can for you too. All right. We are on quality number seven. We've talked about this one before, but I don't think I can talk about it enough. And it is having listening skills, impeccable listening skills, where you are listening so intently to your clients and sitting next to them at the same side of the table, right? Because you are paying attention to their details and everything they say. And when we listen, 80-20 rule, remember, you can go to Amazon, buy a book called The 80-20 Principle. You really are listening so detailed that you could probably repeat everything back to them that they just shared with you. Take notes. I always encourage in this most recent class, I've encouraged if you're used to meeting with clients in person and you never take notes, ask permission. Hey, I know we're going to be meeting for an hour today. Typically, I don't really take detailed notes, but today I really want to. I want to be able to remember everything that you shared with me. So I'm just going to be jotting down some notes today. Would that be okay? You can ask permission if it feels a little bit uncomfortable. So have Perfect, impeccable listening skills. Make sure that if you're in a one-hour meeting, you're only talking 20% of the time. It is a quality that most accountants do not have. And if you have that, not only will you attract a lot more of your ideal clients, but you'll probably attract a greater amount of clients anyway because most of the other accountants don't do that unless they're listening to the Abundant Accountant podcast and actually putting this stuff into action. So quality number eight is having really great communication skills. You know, no matter how great you are at crunching numbers, if we can't hold a conversation with our clients, and a conversation is really where the sale happens, it's going to be difficult for us to get new clients. So how do you have these types of communication skills where you're asking great questions, you're listening 80% of the time and you're only talking 20% of the time. You're really able to listen for the most important, like what I like to call golden nugget. So if someone talks about, let's say why they started, in class yesterday we had a septic company. I don't even know if I'm saying the word right. And, you know, we were doing some role playing and One question that you could ask a business owner if they started a septic company is what inspired you to start that? And you want to listen for one golden nugget. So when I was sharing the answer as to why I started, granted, I made it all up. I was saying that I was holding space in order to pass on the legacy of my father who had this business and it was getting passed down from generation to generation. So if your communication skills are great and your listening skills are great, you would have picked up that the most important thing that I just said was that I wanted to keep a legacy going. And that's why I started this business or inspired me. So when you're listening to your clients and communicating with them, listen for the golden nugget, communicate back to them what you heard. So that could go like, okay, Michelle, so I understand what inspired you to start this business. And it sounds like you really started this in order to pass down the legacy of your family and keep your father's business going. That would be great communication skills. So communicating back what you heard. Okay, that was eight. Number nine, collaboration skills. So how are you collaborating with other accountants who might have a different expertise than you? There might be someone who is an expert in international tax. Then there might be someone who's an expert in 
I did an interview the other day with a gentleman named Eric. He's the tax attorney or, you know, an attorney in this industry. How are you collaborating with other people to attract your ideal clients? Do they even know who you're looking for? I don't know. There's a lot of accounts I work with that don't share exactly who they're looking for. Even in Chicago, I was there. There was about 25 CPAs. Each of the 25 CPAs in the room, we went one by one by one, who they are looking for, who's their ideal client, what's the minimum revenue, what is the industry that they prefer to work with, one by one, because the group of 25 that meets in person three or four times a year didn't even know who each of them was looking for. So it's super important that you collaborate with one another, especially those that are listening here on the Abundant Accountant Podcast and really build your network of professionals. Because if you have like five really good referral sources, that's pretty much all you need. You could get like one new client a month, but it's sharing, you know, who are you working with? What attorneys are you working with? You know, especially in tax, do you work with someone in tax resolution? I was just on the phone yesterday with a past student and he said he was selling his whole practice to somebody who he collaborated with. So he could focus on just tax consulting. And these opportunities are available to you too. It's just putting into action. And the last quality that I think is another, obviously these are all important, but for you to attract your ideal clients is flexibility. In the new digital age, everything's at a little bit of an accelerated pace, wouldn't you say? So you need to adopt to changes. One of the biggest changes that I have seen is how can you meet with clients on video? How can you do it on Zoom? How can you do it on the phone instead of spending time driving back and forth to meet clients or having clients take up extra time in your office if you don't really have that kind of time? So again, what are the latest and greatest softwares out there? In my class last week, we were talking about being flexible with how clients upload files to you with all of the sensitive information. You know, if you want a client, if you want to operate on one platform to upload files securely, that's fine. But just be flexible with those clients and teach them exactly what you need them to do. How should they upload the files? Maybe make a video on how to do it. And really just being up to date with all the regulatory changes in your industry and how do you apply it to your firm, but also how do you communicate that to your clients? So I like to call this just staying flexible. And as an accountingpreneur, you have to be flexible because if you're not flexible, then we're, when we're a little too stiff in the world of entrepreneurship, it doesn't get us the exact types of clients that we want. And I've shared this story before, but we were working, uh, one of my clients, Luke, and Luke, you know, with his niche, he was so strict, like so strict to the point he didn't even take credit cards from clients, only ACH debit. I said, Luke, you know, like for me, I mean, I love using my credit card. I'll even pay 3% extra at times just to use my credit card to gain all my points because it's more beneficial than using ACH at times. So Again, how flexible do you want to get? And then how inflexible do you want to get? Because there's definitely a give and take. So those are definitely the top 10 qualities that you should embrace as an accountant or, you know, a CPA or an EA, whatever you are, tax attorney, to really attract your ideal client. So I would say the best thing to put into action today is take some time to think about which of these 10 qualities are you doing right now? Write those down. And then which ones do you need to develop a little bit more and practice just a little bit more? Because, you know, we all need a little practice in our lives. And how much, you know, maybe choose one of the ones you need to develop and practice and implement it this week, right now, while you're listening and I just want to say thank you for each of you for joining me here on the Abundant Accountant Podcast. I would be grateful and invite you to leave a written review on iTunes because the written reviews actually help the show grow. 
And you know, what was your biggest takeaway from today's episode or maybe even a past episode? And share it with me on iTunes in a written review. It's always an honor to be here with each of you. Thank you so much for listening and have an amazing day. Thank you all so much for joining me here on the Abundant Accountant Podcast. And like I was saying earlier, I would love to hear from more of you. I would love to know which of those top 10 qualities you have, but what is the one or two that you need to work on? And share it with me by, you know, leaving a written review on iTunes. And I invite you to hit that subscribe button so I can make sure to take your written review and highlight it right here on a future episode of the Abundant Accountant Podcast. So thank you again so much for your support. I love hearing from you. I love reading the reviews and I will see you in the next episode.